thank you for the great blessing we have in your presence lead and guide and help us thank you we pray and we thank you in Jesus name amen you may be seated now today is just a short um, anointing service so everybody is going to be anointed this afternoon amen so those of you online uh, Facebook and um, Twitter YouTube get your oil ready I want to just pray for everybody to be anointed amen so turn with me to first Samuel chapter 10 And that is the kingly anointing. Anointing that makes you a king. And why would you want to be a king? Because in Revelation chapter 1, from verse 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our own sins, in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen every day that gets closer to your death or to your going out of this world you get closer to a time where you will not have a chance to believe certain things anymore you will not have a chance to obey certain things anymore you not have a chance to do certain things anymore so once we are here on earth we have to believe and we have to exercise faith and try to believe things and obey things that are written that when we get to heaven we see that while it was there you didn't seem to believe in it but i believe that there are many things we can advance in and believe and experience a blessing So now the Bible says that he's made us kings and priests. And so if he's made us kings and priests, then why not be a king? Amen. Amen. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 10, we see somebody who was anointed to become a king. And that is no other than Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, all right, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head. Now this comes after um, Saul had gone looking for his asses, his um, donkeys. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And he had a son whose name was Saul. All right. And then in verse 3, the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take one of the servants and go and seek the asses. And he passed through the mount and went and went and he couldn't find. And then they said, let's go and visit the prophet who is in that area. All right. So, um, when Samuel saw Saul, um, this is what happened. He anointed him with oil. Amen. And um, I believe that today you are going to be anointed with oil. So in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed, 
from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go on forward from thence. Are you reading? Are you watching? Thou shalt go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going down up to God, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and they will give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. And after that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from a high place, and with a psaltery and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. And let it be that when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Amen. Is it fantastic? Now, the anointing was reserved for three people, the priests, prophets, and kings. And I believe that it is the anointing that makes you what you are supposed to be. Amen. And the anointing is the Holy Spirit's power. And God has also anointed you to become a king. So today, I just want to take some oil, put it on your head, pour it on your head, and pray for you. And I believe that God is going to bless you And um, you'll be anointed. And all the prophecies that were given to Saul will also happen to you. Amen. Amen. Now, you must believe in spiritual things. Amen. Up here, please. Sound. You must believe in spiritual things. Because that's why we are in church. Because we we, we believe in the spiritual world. We, We actually are believers. We actually believe these things. I believe that I am where I am because of the anointing of the Lord that is upon my life. Amen. Amen. Now, there are different ways by which you can come by the anointing. Amen. And over in the book of Acts, we see... Uh, in Acts chapter number 4, what we call the anointing that happened in your own company. You see, we are in our own company. And in Acts chapter 4, from verse 23 to 31, we see how Peter and John were let go and they came unto their own company. And I think it always speaks of this verse. And he says, everyone should have his own company. You must have your own company, which means your brothers and your sisters in church. That is our own company. That is, we are in our own company. So they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. All right? And then when they reported, all right, they says, who by the mouth of Thy servant David, when they reported these things, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, when the people heard the report that Peter and John brought, they lifted their voice and they prayed with one accord. And they said, O God, which made heaven and earth. Amen. Who by the mouth of thy servant David said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. 
For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together against. All these people came against Jesus. Pontius, Pilate, Herod, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel. To do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before that it should be done. So when you see the enemies of God doing things, God's hand and God's counsel has already determined that these things should be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they might speak thy word. And by stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness. They were what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. So they became anointed again. So step number one, are you writing, is that you must believe that you can be anointed again and again. Because this is Acts chapter 4. But remember they were anointed in Acts chapter 2. So everybody here must believe that you can become anointed again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. again. Receive the anointing one more time in your life. I believe that anyone who is serving the Lord, eh, remember this, there's going to be a number of occasions in your life when God will anoint you yet again. Maybe he anointed you before, but he's going to anoint you again. He's going to touch you again. We, we, the song we sing, another, another, another touch from the Lord. So another touch. Another touch. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When I was in secondary school, I desired the Holy Spirit so much. And um, I couldn't speak in tongues. I, I look at people speaking in tongues and I would... At first I laughed. Then later I realized there was something real. Then I wanted it. And I remember one day I went to town and called a man who we had heard had the Holy Spirit. And I brought him to the school. And I told him, we will assemble and wait for you to come and pray for us to receive the Holy Spirit. So we assembled in the eastern compound of my school, Achimota School. And it was just in a classroom in the afternoon. And this man came from town. I don't want to mention his name because it's a famous name. But he was not, he was not a famous person or anything, but it's a famous name. So I don't want to mention the name. But when this man came, I said, this is the group. We are all here. We are ready for the Holy Spirit. We, none of us speaks in tongues. We want to speak in tongues. We want to receive the Holy Spirit. So he preached to us. And then he prayed for everybody. He prayed for all of us. And people started to speak in tongues. Most of the people started speaking in tongues. Except me. Except me. (laughs) The one who had gone to organize the man. The one who had been to town to find this Holy Spirit man, I wasn't speaking in tongues. So after he encouraged us, he said, just keep on praying. Uh, God will touch you. Maybe he didn't touch you now, but he'll touch you. And then you'll receive the Holy Spirit. So I went home, uh, back to my house uh, on the Western Compound. And uh, I was continued to seek for the Lord. And one day, I was lying on my bed. Uh, and praying into my pillow. And uh, suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon me. Six weeks after. Yes. And I started to speak in tongues. Hey. I was so frightened. And I felt that if I stop. It will stop. And I, I, I will never be able to speak in tongues again. So I continued praying. Because, you know, I can't be a Christian without speaking in tongues. I need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit 
you shall receive power or ability. You can't do much as a Christian because there are powers at work. There are forces at work. Forces. So without power, you can't have the Holy Spirit. So that was the first time the Holy Spirit touched me. Ah, and I, 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 I started growing more in the Lord. Amen. God anoints those who are thirsty. Hallelujah. And then about uh, some years later, I was in another school. That was a medical school. And uh, the, Lord, uh, um, the, Lord turned, the Lord turned my captivity again. Here again, I was alone in my room praying. I'm saying you must believe that you can be anointed again and again. I was in a room praying in a medical school. You see, in medical school, there's a rotation we call the rural rotation, where you have to go outside the city and live in a more rural community and practice medicine there, because it's different from here. You know, where I went, I tell you, uh, one day I went to the ward and I saw people standing outside the children's ward. And I said, who are these? So many people. And I found out that uh, some of them were there to sell their blood. You know, but you see, you don't have that in a, I don't have, I've not seen that in a crown. But they are there, if you need blood transfusion, you take your blood and you pay them. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they are blood contractors. Oh, yes. And you see, for a child, they extract a certain amount, small amount, and it will save the child's life. And so they are all there, selling their blood. I don't think you have this in London or in certain places. Anyway, so I have to go to such a place to see what it's like to be a doctor over there. And one night, whilst I was there in 1988, a few months before I became a doctor, Ah, in the evening, I took my bread from Insawam. That's why Insawam bread is a special bread to me. The one I see, I remember the anointing. Because I was eating that Insawam bread when I became anointed. <laughs> Do you know Insawam bread? It's famous. Now they make it smaller, but it's a special bread. <laughs> I was eating that bread, drinking coffee. Because see, there was, I, I'm not used to just eating, you know, have eat this, eat this. No, this was all. And there I was in the room praying at about 7 o'clock or whenever. I knelt down in my room. I was just praying because I had a lot of time. And I put a tape on Kenneth Hagin was preaching. And as Kenneth Hagin was preaching in the tape, I was listening and just enjoying myself because he was talking about prophetic experiences. And I, that's my favorite. And I fell asleep. Don't be... Don't be, a, don't be um, Worried when you sleep when you are praying. You know, I used to fight it, but then at a point I realized that sometimes to pray for a long time, eh, you need a small sleep. And then after that, you, you are alive. It, it is something I've experienced. A sleep comes, and then after that, you are sort of wide awake and you can go for a long time. And sometimes God wants to give you a vision in that initial sleep. It's called the initial sleep. And then you keep flying. So I woke up and at about 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I was still on my knees. And the tape was behind me playing. It was my, my beloved tape recorder, so I, which I had borrowed. And I liked it because it was different from mine. Mine plays one and stops. But hers was auto reverse. When it gets here, it goes back, it goes back, it goes back. So it was on throughout the night. So in the middle of the night, I was listening to this tape when suddenly, you know, something jumped out of the tape. It was over there. Something jumped out of the tape and entered my, 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 my belly. Ah! I felt something like that. It just went. And, and then I heard a voice. And the voice said, from today, you can teach. I mean, I was a medical student who was preparing to be a doctor in about seven months or eight months time. 
And then something comes into me and I hear a voice saying, from today you can teach. I wasn't expecting that because just like I'm not expecting to go to the moon or to be a, 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 what do you call an astronaut. Suddenly, the voice said, you can teach from today. Then I heard another voice, which was more of the kind of voice I was, I was more used to hearing that. I will prove it to you. It was different from the other voices. You know, you have to know your beloved's voice through a microphone, through a phone, live from downstairs, from upstairs. It all sounds different. So this was the voice of the spirit to my spirit. It, the other one seemed to be more audible and louder and I heard him say from today from today you can teach Woo! power entered into me and at that moment in 1988 I became a teacher although no one had heard me teach huh. and I came back to Kolebu after one month I didn't think any I didn't really think much of it but I just carried on it was one of the experiences that I had but it kept coming back to me from today you can teach and as I started teaching I had a little church in a classroom ah and my church started growing you, you will see when we talk about the anointing so God told Saul when you come to this place do as occasion serves you just do whatever you want to do. You are, God is with you. God is with you. Look at it. When these things come, uh, thou shalt do as occasion serve thee. For God is with thee. From that time, certain things you do, it will work. Because God is with you. Because God is with you. Because the anointing is on you, God is with you. Kamalo And I know that many of my children in the realm of the spirit and my sons in the ministry and daughters to have this same anointing that came into me in 1988 in Suhum. And look, I'll tell you, if you ever want to see something that is supernatural, you can see this ministry. The books. The books alone. To have published um, millions of books. I believe over 40 million. More, it must be more than that by now. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, people publish books, uh, 2,000 copies you print. It's very expensive. And millions have been produced and uh, are going around. There are languages. Many, many, many languages. And many, many, many testimonies. So it's supernatural. Ah, you'll be turned into a different person today because of the anointing. And then one day, I was flying from Ukraine to Guinea. And I flew all day and arrived in Guinea. When I got there, I was in the room in the night when an angel appeared. You know, I can still see the angel and the bottle with a, with an, a bottle of oil as, at the bottle was as tall as this. With a snout long and wide, full of oil. Oil for you. Oh, yes. I was wondering what is happening. And that day, God gave me another, yet another. That's why I say, another Another, another touch. And I realized that something was happening in Guinea. And when I went out preaching that day, I remember, when I start preaching, people start getting healed. You can't finish preaching. You will preach and they start clapping. What's happening? We are healed. People are healed. People are healed. I didn't, didn't do anything. Many times. And different experiences. And so that, that convinced me that there are newer and newer anointings and gifts along the way. The grace to write songs. 
It's, you see, recently it came on the scene. Not so old. Oh, yes. And you see, the production of the music is also a grace and something very mysterious and wonderful and many, many things. I wish I could tell you more. Ah, there are more things. I said there are more things. Never hold back from any lane on a farm. Never get to the place and say, I've been laid hands on 18 times. No, because you never know. Some of the lane on a farm is dry. There's nothing. There's nothing to it. You might as well lay hands on a stone statue. But there are times that a lane on a farm, you see that something wonderful has happened. Oh, yes. I remember one time Bishop Oedipo came to Ghana. Ah, he called me to come sit on the stage uh, and I went and he said, she made me sit by him. When he finished preaching, he came and sat down and uh, I, I think I turned to him, he was, he was on my side and then he, he held my hand and he held my hand for about five to seven minutes continuously. You know that type of holding of hand where your hand will start? Some of you have had beloved, you hold hand and the hand starts to sweat. Because this is too much. He was holding my hand. And I knew that. Ah. Makabalo basha. Madola migaba. Tomari balebo samandola beshiba la badamba roma landa. Receive the anointing of the Lord upon your life. Yes. You can make fun of it. But how do you explain God's work? I'm asking you a question. I said you can make fun of it. How do you explain all the things? How do you explain all the things? How do you explain? How do you explain the work of God? If you don't use the anointing. How do you explain the things that God is doing? So from today, open your heart. Open your mind. And say, Lord, I'm ready for another infusion of your power. Uh, perhaps new fruits are going to start coming out which you never knew you had and which you never knew you, you, you could be in you. Uh, which you could be used for. Oh yes. Oh yes. Receive that grace. That's step number one. Step number two. And you ask yourself, why is it that when Jesus met his disciples, you know, he breathed on them? <sighs> Why not? Ah, and he said, receive the spirit. Step number two, embrace persecution. Because it brings out the anointing. Persecution brings out the anointing. A persecuted person is more anointed than an unpersecuted person. A pers- Okay, point number three. I'll share with those who understand. Obey God in spite of the pressure you have. Oh, yes. Pressure. Pressure brings out the anointing. Because the people prayed... And they said, for we cannot but speak the things we have heard. Peter answered, and John answered, whether it be right in the sight of God, hearken whether we ought to listen to you more than to God. That's step number three. Pressure. Persecutions, pressure. Then number four, step to the anointing, is threats and accusations. It says, Bible says, for when they had further threatened them, when they further threaten them, when you see a person heavily accused and threatened, it is often that the person is often on the road of the anointing. Billy Graham said it was the accusations in the press that made him famous. That's how, he, that's how Billy, Billy Graham became famous. Step number five, have your own company to which you belong. 
Have your own what? Make sure you are a solid part of the company. Don't be on the fringes. Don't be on the outside. Be a solid part of the company. So that when God blesses you, you come back to your company. You see, if you become greatly anointed and you don't have a church to preach in, what's the use of your anointing? If you are doing great things and you are under a lot of accusations, pressures, and and then God even anoints you, but you've left the company to which you belong, where are you going to use the anointing that is on your life? You made a mistake. Remember what I gave you, the master key to prosperity. is being location, location, location. Being in the right place. And being let go. They went to their own company. Step number five. Step number six. Step number six. Pray for power, miracles, signs, and wonders. Pray for it. Everybody, I want, I want everybody to pray for, pray for things. Pray for God to move. Pray for angels. Pray for a miracle. The Bible says that they, they said, Lord, let signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders will be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Pray specifically. One time the Lord told me, pray for certain things. Pray for it and you will see it. Look at what they prayed in Acts 4. This is the road to the anointing. Pray for, you know, learn to pray for spiritual things. Somebody said to me, I prayed for this, I prayed for that, I prayed for this, I prayed for that. None of them has happened. Do you know that most of the things your child asks you for, the answer is no. Hmm. I think I'll go and share this with her. More mature people. Most of the things your child asks you, the answer is no. Most of the things you actually say yes to are things that are helpful. True or not true? Your child will come and ask you for a phone, and you know that it's going to use it for something. And most of the time, you say no. At the right time, I'll give you a phone. Meanwhile, you can give the child ten phones. Most of the things, the answer is no. I want to go and stay at my friend's house till next year. No. You stay at home. I want to eat this food. No. I want to watch television. No. True or not true? I'm showing you the topics to pray for. Pray for power. Miracles, signs, and wonders. And you will see that God cannot say no to that. He will say, yes, I'll show you a miracle. I'll show you signs and I'll show you wonders. Amen. And finally, united prayer. Number seven. These are seven steps to the anointing in your own company. United prayer. When we pray... You know, these days I've, be, I've become more excited about flow prayer meeting You in the flow church. I just feel more grace is available to us by just praying. And you know, somebody was saying that the topics that you are praying on, it doesn't look usual. Because we are not praying for this and praying for that and praying for that and praying for that. Hey, those prayers are being answered. Though. Spend three hours praying And you'll be surprised what it can do for you. Just the fact that you asked and you prayed. There are certain things when they happen, you just remember, you know something, I've prayed about this before. Yes. And I believe God is going to answer. Instead of asking God for certain things, pray for the spiritual things, for the wisdom. Uh, Pray for the anointing. Now, What is step number one? Huh? Believe you can be anointed again and again. Number two? 
Pray for what? Pray, embrace persecution. What have they written there? Ah. Remove that quickly, please. Embrace a persecution. Persecution. Amen. Persecution. That's bringing out the anointing. Then number three, pressure. Pressure. They were putting pressure on Peter and John. At the point they said, should we obey you? We cannot give in to you. Should we obey you or, or God? Don't start whining about my mommy said, my daddy said, I can't come to church. Well, I cannot do this. I cannot. That's the pressure that is going to bring the anointing out of you. You see, olives, olive trees produce olives. And olives produce olive oil. But how do you get the olive oil out of the olives? By beating the tree and beating the olives. Exodus 27 verse 20. Thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, beaten. Beaten for the light. To cause the lamp to burn always. Or Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 20. When thou beatest thy olive tree. When you beat your olive tree. Thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger. For the fatherless. So beating an olive tree is part of bringing out the oil. Beating the tree and beating the olives. That's why persecution and pressure produces the oil. It's the pressure and the persecution and the trouble that brings out the grace and the oil and the anointing. Oh yes. If you are a good general, you need a war. You need a war. The war is going to bring out your gift. Without a war, you are just an academician. You're just an academician. If you are a great doctor or a great surgeon, you need complex cases to have survived under your hand and recovered. To be a great surgeon, not just an academic result from school. You need to be beaten. He says, when thou beatest thine olive tree. You know, I learned this from Benny Hinn. I heard him speaking about the beating of the olive trees and beating olives. I was shocked. I, I never knew because I don't know anything about olives. You have to beat them to get the oil out. It is the troubles and the persecutions and the pressure that brings out the grace and the power into your life. So stop whining like a little baby and stand up strong. You can't be standing and say, I mean, this man is chasing me. This man is playing with my whatever. He's doing this, he's doing that. Then stand up and stop it. And let's see that you are anointed. I think I'll share this with some other people who want want these things to be shared with them. Stand up and fight. And don't allow yourself to be used and misused and abused. That small fight, that's, that's when we see that you are a pure person or that you are, I mean, actually a spiritual, a, 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 a spiritual fighter. That's what brings about lying down for people to just walk over you. That's not the way to show the anointing or to bring out the power and the grace. What have you been through? What have you survived? 
You are nothing if people can just walk over you. And there are people who want to cheat the church. And those of us who are custodians of the church, we also not sit down for people to cheat the church. There are orangus who want to spoil the church, and our job is to fight to protect the church. And so is yours to fight and to protect the church. To fight and protect your life from being destroyed by the enemy. It's your, it's, that's where the anointing comes out because the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach, to set captives free, to deliver the captives, to open the eyes of the blind. It's like there's something you have to do that shows and that's where you see the anointing is there. Jesus did not just preach it. He went out and found blind people and he was under pressure to do miracles. That's what shows that you are anointed. Pressure is going to bring it down to some of the greatest occasions of my life in the ministry have been under great pressure. Oh yes. You know there are some places you ever preach you'll be, you'll be very tense. You'll be very tense. But those were some of the greatest moments. Oh yeah. Greatest moments come with greatest pressure. The pressure is pushing out the oil. I remember one time I was at uh, the uh, large gathering and then the, here walks in a president like a, a sitting president and sitting behind me and it's now time for miracles and everybody's watching you say, you say you are doing miracles do and let us see <laughs> oh yes different moments different moments I don't know what crisis you are going through or what you have been through but don't give up and don't stop fighting. The fight and the pressure and the beating of your life is bringing out the oil, is bringing out the grace, is bringing out the good anointing. Yes, that is supposed to be in you. So Peter and John, we never knew they were so powerful or they were great. All this part of the Bible wouldn't have been written. They were taken and they were beaten and they were set free. <laughs> After being beaten and set free, they came to their own company. And the anointing was flowing. They said, Lord, let signs and wonders. And that's what we are reading this morning, this afternoon. So I see this great anointing coming on you in your own company. And when they came to their own company, they prayed together. United prayer. So on Tuesday morning, rise up. And everybody should rise up. And Friday, rise up for this, this is a season, whatever. And just pray. Just pray. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Just pray. There's a spiritual element to everything. There's a spiritual element. Pray. And through prayer and through the pressure that you are experiencing, the anointing will come. What does the Bible say? And then they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's how to become anointed. The Bible says and when they had prayed, the place was shaken together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. How do you get filled with the Holy Ghost? This is anointing. How? From the pressure, the threats, the accusations. Eh? <laughs> no, I don't wish you to be accused, but I tell you, you can't be anointed without accusations. Yeah, It, it does something to you. Maybe it brings out something. Yeah. Because it has a certain effect. I've been accused. There's a certain effect that it, there's no, there's nothing that compares with that. Yes. So dear child, young man, you know, many of my sons in the ministry are going to do very great things. Yeah. Yeah. Kala masho bara masaya. Yes. I see the anointing going. I see the anointing passing and moving. Uh, oh, beautiful. Now, let's jump as we close back to First Samuel chapter 10. In closing, these are the things that are going to happen today. 
Malumbre caramba dombolo madere nalamba dolo bere gileshe mada. You know, one time I was there when Idahosa, Benson Idahosa, who passed away some years ago, he laid hands on me. The only time he's laid hands on me, he laid hands on my head and anointed me. And this here started to burn with fuel, fire. How do, you, how do you have all these experiences? You are also having them, but you are not recognizing them. It's like nothing to you. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 10. That word captain, there is a version. I don't know which version, one of the versions. And I have, it says that because the Lord has anointed you to be captain. One of the versions says to be leader. That's where we see there is an anointing for leadership. So today as we pray... There is an anointing for leadership. That's the kingly anointing. The kingly anointing is coming on you. You are going to be a leader. Receive leadership anointing. I'm sure they are going to find that version very soon and show us. The Lord has anointed you to be a leader. A leader of God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not ruler. This is ruler. There is leader. Leader. (laughs) So when the anointing comes on you, God is going to turn you into a leader. Anybody who knows me from primary school or secondary school knows me as an unimpressive um, quiet person was not impressive I was never chosen huh ERV yes ERV the person up there is not working hard everybody say unimpressive how many of you feel that you are you are unimpressive like you don't impress people oh yes Actually, I was, I was not just unimpressive. I was ugly. Yes. One day, somebody saw me and asked me, do you think you become, you go to heaven by being a skeleton? Because I look more like a skeleton. When my wife took me to her sister, her sister said that if she's, if my wife is okay, then she's also okay. I don't know if you understand what it means. Like, if, 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 if somebody is okay with this, then it, it's fine. Mm. Anyone who is unimpressive, eh? that's why I like, I always when I see people who feel that they are no anointed or no one knows them no one liked me much no one chose me oh i just feel a kinship with them i feel that oh this is somebody who is just like me i and i know that feeling oh yes no one liked me much no one chose me but the lord chose me put on the erv version please Unless you lose your job this afternoon, by four o'clock you'd have lost your job. Hallelujah. I see you receiving the anointing and becoming a leader. This is what is going to happen. You are going to become a leader. Abalo rabazo 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 rabazo. Look at this version. I like this version. Put it on the screen. It says Samuel took a jar of the special oil and poured the oil on Saul's head. And Samuel kissed Saul and said, The Lord has anointed you to be the leader. The Lord has anointed you to be the leader. This is what happened to me. I became a leader. I have no, I have, I've never been to leadership school. 
And I'm not an art student at all. Everyone who knows me will know that I'm, I'm a science student. Art, history, and what? Economics. No, 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 no. I don't know. I don't want to know at all. The Lord has made me a leader. Father, thank you for anointing your children to become it. Those of you online, Facebook and whatever, you are being anointed to become leaders. In Jesus' name. Receive it now. Mm. Number two, you are going to recover all that you have lost. He says, after you are departed, eh, two men will come and show you what is missing. Wow. They will show you what you are seeking. Anything that is lost because of the anointing. Ah, you recover. There's somebody here, you've lost a beloved. It's as though you were on a ship with a nice brother and he fell out of the boat. And the ship has continued without him. I prophesy that by the power of God, another one will be revealed in the boat. In Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 10 and verse 3. Verse 3. And thou shalt go on forward. So notice from verse 1 he was anointed. Put us verse 1 again. From verse 1 he was anointed. Are you getting your oil ready? I want everybody to get up, organize some oil. There's oil everywhere. There's oil everywhere. Don't worry. Everybody's going to get a bit of oil in your hand. But I want you to understand what you are about to receive. I just feel today to just pray for you. That, I'm not preaching today. Have I preached? I'm just chatting with you and then we are going to pray. Isn't it? Yes. Receive. He says, he said in verse 1, look at verse 1. Samuel took an oil and he kissed him. Wow. And said, the Lord has anointed you to be captain. Number 2. Number 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. And then when you are departed, ah, men will come and give you the missing asses. You know, everything that it seems that I miss in medical school, it seems that I found it again. It seems that I found it again. I thought I was losing it in when, I, when, I, when I didn't follow medicine. But it seems I've got it. I even have hospitals where my name is there. When I go, they put my name there that I can park there. Oh. I, when I was in Colombo, I used to see Professor so-and-so, Dr. so-and-so, and I said, oh, wow. Well, will I ever my name be written somewhere? But even today, there are places I go, my name is there. This is my special parking spot. Give the Lord a shout of praise. You will recover everything that is seen you've lost. You think you lost your baby? You think you lost your child? When Adam lost his child, that is um, Abel, after that, Adam had nine more children, including daughters. Yes. And the Bible, the Bible says after 60 years, then they became joyful. Adam and Eve, they became joyful. It, was, it took about, I think, one or two jubilees. Then they became joyful again. Then they gave birth to Enos and other daughters and so on. And then, you know, their children had to marry each other. Where will you get a wife from? There are only two people. You see, you people, you are over righteous. Hmm. <laughs> and when they became joyful, then they gave birth to the next one, Enos and several other children. You become joyful again in the name of Jesus. Verse 3. It's happening, Lord. Verse 3, quickly. Then thou shalt go on forward. From today, as the anointing comes on your life, you are going to start going forward. So everyone who is stuck, things are not moving, and you don't seem to be moving forward. Your life starts moving forward. 
and there are going to come several testimonies that my life is moving forward since I received the anointing of the Lord. Amen. Ah, are you there? Verse 4. And they will salute thee. And they will what? Salute thee. You come to church and go, nobody even greets you. Because it's like you are not impressive. Like they've not even noticed you to make you an usher. They shall salute thee. The anointing will make people salute you. I've been saluted in many countries. Oh, yes. Like this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I remember one particular country. It is a French-speaking country. I was flying to France after a crusade. And the, the man kidnapped me, not kidnapped, you know what I mean, is from the VIP lounge. He drove me, he wanted to be with me alone. He drove the car. And so I, my, my people were left behind. And he drove me to the Air France in the night, at midnight, when he got there. They are, they are not Christians. Though. Upstairs, salute. And I took you up. You'll be saluted in many places. And these are not because, he, obviously, he doesn't know he was Mills. Do you, do you think he knows he was Mills? Or do you think he knows my family at Jamestown? I'm asking you, do you think he knows my family at Jamestown? Or do you think it's because I'm a medical doctor? You think there are no doctors in that country? They shall salute thee. Father, let today be a day to remember. A day when we hear that your word says that because of the anointing, they shall salute thee. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be saluted. Then, men shall give to you. Hey! Mora Mindola Mazambalada. It says, and they shall give thee two loaves of bread. Two loaves of bread. Ah! Two loaves of bread. Why should somebody give you his bread? What he eats, he should give it to you. I remember one time I was in a village preaching and I lifted up my eyes and I saw two men do you know where they were from? They had come from Europe, from France. I said, what are you doing here? I said, ah, we have come to present you with two loaves of bread. Wow. Over here? I said, yeah, we knew that we, we had you are in the village. We have come to give you two loaves of bread. Wow. Hey! Yeah. I see loaves of bread being given to you from all over the world because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You lift up your eyes and you see somebody who is just loving you and just saying, you know, the bread I was going to eat, eh? the car I was going to drive, eh? the house I was going to live in, the carpet I was going to roll out, the furniture I was going to sit on, the dollars I was going to use, the euros I had in my bank, I want to rather give it to you than to use it. When I give it to you, I feel happier than when I go and spend it. Are you anointed? When you are anointed, you'll be shocked. People have gone shopping with their money. That loaf, they rather prefer to give it to you. Many years ago, as, as one of my daughters, she went home to Tema. Her house was in Tema. When she came back, she came to me. I was a pastor. 
You know, I just, you will never know why somebody is special to you. And when she came, she came to look for me in my room. And she said, I went home. She doesn't come from a rich home. But this is what I had. So I have brought it to you. So when I looked, it was a loaf of bread and a tin of milo. She brought it to me that I have brought it to you. Will tears not come out of your eyes? This is what she had. I will never forget. It's one of the biggest offerings I've ever received. This is what I had. And the milo that she would have. I, I think maybe some of you, I'm, maybe, I think I'm talking to some rich people. I'm talking to rich people here. Like maybe these type of things don't apply in your lives. But if you've ever been in school where there is nothing. People even have to go and have sex to get money. And somebody comes to you and says, my bread. And what, she gave me one tin of milo and a loaf of bread. That's what she had from home. And she gave it to me. I didn't even know what to do. Huh? Uh, you got to be careful when you see people, eh? You don't know what they are. Then after that, the anointing, you are going to have God's presence. He says, then you shall come to the hill of God. Verse 5. You are going to come to God's hill. You see angels will be with you all the time. Angels, why? Because we have angels called the angel of his presence. When the presence is there, then they come. It's like a, a flickety or these animals that fly. Where there's light, then they come to the light. So there are angels that come to where the presence is. When you are in a room praying, then there's a presence that brings angels. Angels doesn't hear. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You see the presence. You come to the hill of God. And when you come to God's presence, you see angels all around you. Receive grace. And then the anointing will cause you to meet certain people. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 5. It says, and thou shalt meet a company of prophets. Important people for your life. You encounter them and you meet them. Because of the anointing. That is on your life. Oh yes. Oh yes. May you enjoy meeting important people who are going to be important for your life because of the anointing. And then you shall prophesy. I see you preaching and prophesying. It says in verse 6, And then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy. That's why I'm preaching, because the anointing is on my, on my life. I preach at Flow Church service. And then where do I preach again? I preach at an offering time. And I'm still preaching. And it's, oh, you are the ones who retired. But for me, I can be on. Oh, yes. And finally, I want you to take your oil right now. Everybody get some oil. Before I give you the last point. And I want you to believe. I don't know why I'm doing this today, but I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I'm following the gentle nudgings of the wind of the Spirit. Everybody get a bit of oil on your, on your palm like this. And let's, we, are going to, we are going to pray, but this is beautiful. Those of you online, get a bit of oil. Facebook, YouTube, Healing Jesus TV. You know, many people watch Healing Jesus TV, but because we can't monitor it directly, get your Healing Jesus TV on, and you can see it on a big screen. You don't have to watch on that small yam phone, a small Samsung, Chinese Samsung phone. Get oil. I'm about to pray, but I'm about to give you the last thing that is going to happen to you. Just get a bit of oil on your, on your palm. Please, not for it to drop on the carpet, please. Remember that this is a new carpet. Just a little drop of oil. 
Because you know why you just need a drop? Because the Bible says, when Samuel put the oil on Saul, he said, I'm putting this physical oil. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you? So it's like God has already anointed you and the oil is just a sign of the anointing that God has already anointed you. So the oil is not really what matters, but there's an anointing. Have you got your little oil? Are you ready for this? I believe you are ready. Look at First Samuel chapter 10. Never forget this. Never forget this. Are you watching? It says, and thou shalt be turned into another man. That's the end. Thou shalt be turned into another man. Underline it. You change when the anointing is on you. You change. You actually change. You actually change. Yes, you actually change. You really change. When I look at myself, I realize I'm really, I'm really different from how I was. Oh, yes. I'm really different. And I believe today, as the anointing comes on your life, and what happens in verse 7, do whatever the Lord... What, so many things you not even pray about, what you are doing is right. What you are doing is right. Yes. You just do what occasion serves thee. Underline it. Do as occasion serves thee. Put your hand out like this. Lift your hand out like this. Father, thank you as we come to your beautiful throne. Lord, as we pray, we believe in the anointing. Anointing that made Saul into a leader. That means that the Holy Spirit can take an unimpressive nobody and turn the person into another man. Now, put it on your forehead and just rub it. That's a shaman, a rubbing, shamanized gift. Receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. All over this place, receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Power. Grace. Gifts. Transformation. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. You are turned into another man. You shall prophesy. Men shall salute thee. You shall go forward and not backward and not sideways. Men shall give to you. You shall meet people that you are supposed to meet. You shall encounter the people you are to encounter. Rama Sule Kulumba Abalo Oboshimba Lamene. You are turned into a leader of God's people. A captain, a captain, a ruler, and a leader. Receive the leadership anointing. Receive the leadership and the rulership grace for your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone. I pray for those watching online. I pray for those on Healing Jesus TV, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and those of us here, thousands watching. In the name of Jesus, Pambarone Simbarana, in this special anointing service, may God empower you. May God anoint you. May God lift you up. As you are unimpressive and unremarkable today by power, by grace, by the anointing, become remarkable and outstanding like a city set on a hill, like a light that is put upon a table. May the Lord make you outstanding in your time and in your generation. May the Lord lift you up and make you to be transformed into another man. 
Mahoranda la masupa la karabasanda. In the name of Jesus, may you change from an unholy man, a wicked man, an immoral man, a useless man, a financially down person, a poverty stricken person, into a graceful man, a man anointed by God's love and power, God's faith and power, God's grace and giftings. Receive it on your life right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it now. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now lift your two hands. Lift up your two hands. Father, I thank you for every pastor who is watching, everyone who is here, every bishop, every servant of God. I thank you for every ordinary person. I thank you that the unremarkable the undistinguishable from the others shall be distinguished and shall be noticed and shall be marked out for greatness in you greatness in your eyes greatness for great exploits in these latter times father i thank you i lift my hand also with them and i thank you that you chose today to give gifts to men you chose today to bless children to bless little ones to bless nobodies to bless everyone here with your power and with your grace and with your anointing i thank you i thank you that we shall never be the same again because we are turned and transformed into another man forever and forever into another woman another person thank you for softness and kindness and gentleness and the fruits of the holy spirit that come into our lives today we give you thanks and we give you praise in the name of jesus now place your hand on your belly as the lord the bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers as the lord himself anointed me in 1988 and said from today you can teach father i pray that many of my sons and daughters and children that you've given to me in the ministry this afternoon receive now that power from today you can teach power receive it now in the name of Jesus be outstanding in teaching in revelation in giftings in oratory gifts and abilities Maratusha receive power receive grace in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, so be it. So be it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now lift your hands. I hear the word gratias. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody who has faith, speak to God yourself and say thank you. Say thank you. If you have faith and you believe that something real has happened to you today say thank you thank you because god has chosen today to bless you and to anoint you in the mighty name of jesus father we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful in jesus name we pray and everyone said amen bow your heads down for a moment Father, I thank you for what you've done today. I know, I know, I know. No one loved me much. But when you brought your gift, it changed everything. I thank you, you've done it today. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you want to give your life to God, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. Maybe somebody invited you to church. But you want to give your life to God today. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand very quickly. Oh yes, just lift it up. I want to give my life to Jesus today. If you are here like that, your hand must be up like this, like how my hand is up. And if your hand is up like that, I want you to come to me in the front here. I'm giving you three seconds to come to me in the front here. And I'm going to pray with you. Stand right here, my dear. Stand right here. 
God bless you. Come, come. I'm giving you three seconds. Father, thank you for everyone who's come. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my life to God today. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I humble myself and I surrender everything to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen.